Opening up second fronts against Russia could help Ukraine confront the Kremlin, the opinion was stated by the Secretary of the National Security and Defense Council of Ukraine, Alexei Danilov. He noted that these are mostly quasi-states created by the Kremlin and which have never been recognized by the civilized world. Azerbaijan has launched an offensive in the Nagorno-Karabakh region. This happened after Russia openly invaded the territory of Ukraine and withdrew its so-called peacekeeping forces from the disputed territory between Armenia and Azerbaijan. At the same time, the Nagorno-Karabakh region is not the only Russian-controlled territory that Azerbaijan wants to regain. In 2014, the leader of the country's Democratic Party, Sardak Jalalaglu, demanded that Russia give back Dagestan. He said that if the Kremlin wants to be ally of Azerbaijan, it must return its historic lands, while Dagestan itself also has questions for the Kremlin about its lands. Japan makes territorial claims to Russia over four southern Kuril islands. These territories were annexed by the Soviet Union after the end of World War II, and no peace treaty was concluded between the USSR and Japan. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, the islands became part of Russia, and formally, the Kremlin is still at war with Japan. For years, it was a matter of jokes for Russia. Now it's not. The issue of peace has been raised more than once in recent years. After Russia opened invasion of Ukraine, Japan reiterated its right to the island. In response, the Kremlin began military exercises there, and the legend of these maneuvers is counteraction to the enemy landing, which is trying to capture the Kuril Islands. Georgia was torn apart by the Russians several times. The whole region, South Ossetia and Abkhazia, went under Kremlin control, but still no movement in this direction for now on the part of Tbilisi. In mid-March, the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe officially recognized Transnistria, Pridnistrovia, as a zone of Russia occupation. De jure, it is the territory of Moldova. De facto, so-called Transnistrian Moldavian Republic is a self-proclaimed state created as the result of the Kremlin-provoked conflict. Russia supports the quasi-formation and deploys its troops on its territory. After recognizing the region as a zone of Russian occupation, Moldovian President Maya Sandu said that official Chisinau had always demanded the withdrawal of Russian troops and is ready for a diplomatic solution to the conflict. Latvia and Estonia claim part of Russia Pskov region. These are Pitaliv and Pechora districts. These territories were occupied by the Soviet Union. However, after its collapse, they never returned to the Baltic states. Moreover, one part of the Pskov region is claimed by the allied Kremlin Belarus. Its self proclaimed President Lukashenko said in October 2014 that Putin should work hard because part of the Pskov, Smolensk, and Bransk lands once belonged to Belarus. Lithuania declared its rights to what is now Russian Kaliningrad back in 1995 during a round table in Vilnius. It is in the Kaliningrad region that the part of the Baltic fleet of the Federation is based. This region is exclusive state of Russia in Europe, and Lithuania is not the only one who once complained about it. After the Russian invasion of Ukraine, former commander of the Polish ground forces Valdemar Skipchak and officially said the famous words, Kaliningrad is a zone of Russian occupation, and Poland should claim its right to the territory. For now, Kaliningrad, or Königsberg, is left without defense. The units of the 18th Guards Division went to attack Kharkiv direction in Ukraine.